Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a Korean romance comedy movie released in 2011, called, Always. A former boxing champion lost his willingness to fight because of a particular incident. But his life changes completely the moment he meets an interesting blind girl. Can she bring light back into his life? Let's find out together. The story starts with Mussolino, a 30 years old former boxing champion who now works as a water gallon delivery boy. He is quiet and seems to have a dark and mysterious past. Despite being an ex-champion, his life is now dull and miserable. He starts a new part-time night job as a parking lot attendant. His old senior is retiring, he gets the station he used to be in. He sits in the tiny pay booth in the parking lot and stares at the small television under the rainy night. Suddenly, a girl enters the booth while acting friendly despite him not knowing her. When Mussolino asks who she is, she becomes startled. At that moment, he realizes the woman is blind and confusing him for his old senior who previously worked there. Mussolino tells her about the retired senior, and she explains that she used to watch TV with him. Knowing that the old man is no longer there, she apologizes and heads out. But it is raining outside, making the blind girl stand in the cold night waiting for the rain to stop. Mussolino invites her back to the booth to watch the TV with him instead. The blind girl looks happy watching the TV despite being unable to see what is actually happening. Rather than watching, it more close to listening to the drama conversation. Mussolino just sits quietly beside her, admiring the blind girl. After the TV show is done, she gives Mussolino the food she made and asks him to regularly water the night jasmine plant in the booth. This rather unusual encounter brings small light into his dull life. Back at his home, he eats the food she gave and shares some with his pet turtle when he finally decides to do something with his life. The blind girl works in customer service, answering phone calls from customers. Her work is hard, as the customers are often rude. But she tries to endure it as it is the only job she can do. Moreover, a creepy boss seems to be interested in her. Meanwhile, Mussolino decides to visit his old gym. His coach and the gym owner are surprised. While his coach is excited to see him, the gym owner seems to haven't forgiven him. It turns out after winning the championship, Mussolino disappears without a trace. It makes the gym owner, who supported him with all he got, suffers a big loss. His coach brings him around the gym, where he meets his old rival. His rival seems to have unfinished business with him and asks him to spar. But Mussolino seems to haven't fully gained back his spirit to fight. Seeing how cowardly he is, the gym owner becomes furious and casts him out. Nevertheless, the blind girl comes back another night to watch the same television drama series. This time, she constantly asks Mussolino questions on what is happening on the television screen. Little by little, he becomes attached to her. When the drama is over, Mussolino gives the girl a box of peaches gratitude for the food before. When she is about to go back home, Mussolino finally finds out her name, which is Jun Guo. Despite being cheerful, Jung Wo's life as a blind person is not easy. She often finds difficulty in her daily life, and moreover, she lives alone. On the next night, Mussolino waits restlessly for Jung Wo. As usual, the two of them enjoy the drama together. This time, they get to know each other more as Jung Wo is curious about Mussolino's face. When they are done, Jung Wo walks to her home as usual. But this time, a spawn of Satan drives recklessly and almost hits her. Seeing that she sprained her leg, Mussolino brings her to the hospital. After that, he carries her on his back through countless stairs to her home. He can't believe Jung Wo has to walk through them every day. At her house, she asks his help to unclog the clogged drainage, which turns out blocked by Jung Wo's cute panties. Still embarrassed, she gives Mussolino a gift for helping her, which is two tickets to a music concert. But Mussolino doesn't have any friends, so they plan to go together instead. This makes Mussolino and Jung Wo excited. On the day of the date, they enjoy their time together at the music concert. Afterwards, they have dinner together. It turns out that Jung Wo used to be a normal person and lost her vision because of an accident. Her parents also passed away because of it. But when she asks about Mussolino's past, he becomes uncomfortable for some reason. He suddenly becomes cold and accidentally sarcastically mocks Jung Wo about spilled food on her dress. The mood is ruined now, and Jung Wo ends the date. Mussolino still escorts her back to her door, where he apologizes for ruining the night. Just before she enters her home, Mussolino musters up his courage to tell some bit of his past. 
he used to be a boxer and got into a lot of trouble when he was young. That's why he is only a water gallon boy now. But he is trying to get better these days. He didn't want to tell her his past because he was ashamed of it. The next day, Junwa gets called by her boss to his room at work. He gives her a present and seems to try his move on her. But it makes Junwa uncomfortable, and she politely bails out of his room. After work, instead of doing his usual activity with Mossolino, she goes straight home. This makes Mossolino sad, as he is looking forward all day to fixing his mistake last night. After contemplating for a while, he decides to meet with his old coach and the gym owner. Mossolino is still quiet and looks so powerless as the gym owner becomes mad because he still hasn't explained why he was gone. But finally, he musters up his courage and tells them in shame that he was in prison for four years and three months. After the championship, he became a debt collector who beats low knees. The police came to his room one night because he made too much noise beating a broke man. It even caused passing by car got into an accident. Things were not looking good for Mussolino, so he got arrested. The man survives the fall and is still treated at a Catholic hospital. Mussolino often visits him to redeem his old mistake. They seem to be quite close now and have already forgotten their past. The sister at the hospital gives him a souvenir for his girlfriend. But as he doesn't have a girlfriend, he only has one person in mind to give it to. At night, Junwa walks back to her house. But when she opens the door, she is startled because she hears someone behind her. It turns out to be her boss. With a bottle of wine in his hand, it's clear that he is drunk and forces his way inside her house. Junwa still tries to be polite as she still needs her job. It would be hard to get another job because of her condition. But it keeps getting worse, so she asks him to leave. The creepy boss insists and gives her a necklace to her. But when she declines, he becomes furious and tries to get his way with her by force. Fortunately, Mussolino comes just at the right moment and beats the shit out of that creepy boss while Junguo cries in shock. Mussolino comes to calm down Junguo, but she is mad because she might lose her job now. Without it, she can't live. Mussolino tells her that he will take care of her now. But she feels that it just make her more miserable and tells him to leave her alone. Get nothing to say more, Mussolino leaves the present and returns to his job. Things get more awkward between them, but Mussolino can't leave her alone. So for the following days, he follows her around secretly just to make sure she is okay. One night, Junwa seems to have calmed down and suddenly approaches him. She asks him out on a quick trip this weekend. Of course, our boy Mussolino gladly accepts. On the day of the trip, Mussolino shows up at her house with a cute little dog. He adopted it so it can accompany her. So then the three of them go on the trips and enjoy nature. They talk all sorts of things by the river and keep two pebbles as a souvenir. They each keep one to remind of each other. And by that is the start of their beautiful relationship. Now that he has a reason to live, Mussolino goes back to the gym and trains for the MMA tournament. He wins most of the fight and becomes quite successful. He then redesigns Junwa's house, where they live together now, to be more comfortable for her. Their life together is quite colorful now as they have each other to rely on. After some time, Junwa brings him to her parents' memorial place to introduce him. She tells Mussolino about her family more, how she lost her sight and both of her parents in a car accident. That's when Mussolino realizes that the same incident got him arrested. So the reason Junwa loses his sight and both of her parents is because of him. This shocking fact makes him devastated. But he still doesn't dare to bring this up to Junwa. Later, Junwa's sight is getting worse. The doctor says that her sight is heavily blurred, but soon it will be all black. She needs to get a transplant soon, but there is still no donor. So the doctor suggests Mussolino just buy it instead, which cost a lot. In need of money, he goes to his old rival to borrow some money. He introduces him to a sketchy boss, where he registers Mussolino to an illegal fight in Thailand. He gets a down payment which is enough for Jun Guo's operation, but he now needs to do some questionable fight soon. He keeps the job secret from Jun Guo and tells her that he has some savings for the operation cost. At first, she refuses because being blind makes her less guilty of her parents' death. But when Mussolino asks if she wants to see his and their future children's face, she finally agrees. He accompanies Junwa at the hospital until the operation begins, then leaves for Thailand without telling her. When he arrives there, it turns out that the fight is a bloody caged fight until one of the fighters passes out. 
Some wealthy patrons watch the fight live while it is also broadcasted to the underground illegal gambling world. He tries so hard to survive the fight but surprisingly comes out as the winner. This makes his old rival furious because it turns out he placed a bet against Mussolino. The prize of the fight is a diamond, which he needs to smuggle back to Korea. But just before he is about to leave Thailand, his old rival and his men come to stab Mussolino and steal the diamond. Meanwhile, in Korea, Jung Hwa has finished her operation and gained back her sight. But no matter how long she waits, Mussolino is nowhere to be found. She also has to move from her house. Just before she leaves, a package comes for Mussolino from the Catholic hospital. She then goes there and meets the broken man and the sisters there. They instantly recognize her as Mussolino's girlfriend as he talks about her a lot. After hearing the story about his accident, Jung Hwa realizes what was actually happen. She contemplates for a while but seems to have found peace about the whole accident. Life goes on, and she now makes sculptures in her workshop. She tries to replicate Mussolino's face but fails as she has never actually seen his face. Besides that, her life is quite stable. She also often does volunteer work at a hospital. And this time, unexpectedly, Mussolino is one of the patients there. She massages him without actually knowing who he is. Mussolino also tries not to make a sound as he wants to cut ties with her. His body has been damaged, so he doesn't want to be a burden. After Mussolino gets out of the hospital, he visits Jung Hwa's store. He buys a vase with a night jasmine plant and takes back his pet turtle. Outside the store, his dog recognizes him and runs toward him. Jung Hwa recognizes him as the patient from the hospital and apologizes as he walks away. When she goes back to the store, she realizes the pet turtle is missing, and the dog keeps barking. She asks the worker if someone on crutches has just come. Instantly, she realizes that it is Mussolino. She frantically runs outside to try to find him but fails. She thinks hard and goes to the place where they had a trip before. Just as fate decides, the two of them meet there. The story ends with the two of them finally reuniting. And so they live happily ever after. Love is what gives meaning to life. A fated relationship runs deeps and will always find its ways, even in a dark way. What do you think about their story? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you next time.